speaking of the other game you like that falls under a lot of the same categories that you just brought up, the Giants at the Bills. Now, unlike the Dolphins, this team's coming off a, not just a loss, I would say a pretty devastating loss when you factor in the injuries. Now, this game's at Buffalo. The place is going to be rocking. But defensively, this team has been, I mean, taking some fucking massive, massive hits the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, if you go back, this is another spot where I'm, I think this is just the bottom mark of the Giants. We haven't covered yet um, <laughs> on this season. They have yet, yeah, yet to cover. Um, and for... Look, when I look at the Bills, number one, it's it's not a great spot. They were just in London. They're coming back to Buffalo. There's just been a lot of travel over the past two weeks. And they've lost three all-pro caliber defensive players in the past two weeks. You lose Milano, the heart and soul of that dude does so much at linebacker. You lose your shutdown corner in Trey White. You lose your D-tackle, Daquan Jones, who was leading the NFL among all interior defensive linemen in pass block win rate. You have other injuries also to other players who are questionable. Russo and uh, Von Miller still do- doesn't look like himself. I think he came back just to play in London. This defense has lost a lot of guys. And if you look, last week, the Giants were catching 13, 12 and a half at Miami. Daniel Jones gets hurt. They were playing without anybody, and they might be playing without anybody this week. They still had a chance to cover that game, even though they got destroyed. That's the NFL. Like, y- y- these big numbers, even if you're getting blown out, teams are take the, completely take their foot off the gas. There's just no reason to show much. You just want to preserve your, like they don't run it up like in college. So, but I look at this game and now Buffalo's laying 14 and a half um, at home against the Giants in a, in a bad spot coming back from London after losing three all pro defense players with other defensive injuries. You're probably going to get Tyrod Taylor here. I don't think it's that much of a drop off. The other factor that I like here, other than like, it's just so hard to cover. Could argue it's an upgrade. Yeah, could argue it's an upgrade. He can give you a little bit more. It's slightly more. Daniel Jones is very mobile. Um, but Daniel Jones also has lost the plot because he's been under so much pressure that he just has, he's he's lost right back there. Like, he's not Daniel Jones that we saw last year where everything was simplified for him. I also think Barkley might play. We'll see how effective he can be. But the offense is, used to rely on him, you know, early last year. And then every, that set everything else up. You can run on the Bills. So I think that if Barkley plays, you're going to go heavy 12 personnel, bring in two tight ends, and then just try to grind this game down and push. And Dable knows the Buffalo offense and the Buffalo defense extremely well. Um, so I think that I'll have a really good game plan here for how to simplify things, how to attack. The Giants have been dreadful. Who wants to bet the Giants? Nobody. I mean, I guess except me. Uh, 14 and a half, I think, is just too many points against Buffalo team coming back from London with defensive injuries, the Dable familiarity, uh, I think uh, works in your favor. And teams that have yet to cover a game in game six or beyond, again, teams no one wants to bet, past 30 seasons, 68% against the spread, including five and one as a double-digit underdog. Uh, Panthers also haven't covered a game either, so they fall into that. Five and one double-digit underdogs, three of the six, one outright. If you go back in history, you'll see some wet. This is still the NFL. These are still professional football players. You'll see some, you you go back like 2011, there was a Saints game. They were like 17 point favorites and lost. Like this is still the NFL. It wouldn't even completely shock me if like the Giants or Panthers somehow won uh, this week. We've seen it in the past, but ultimately I, I'm not going to sit here and say rosy things about the Giants or Panthers. I just think that this is the bottom of the market. And there's reasons to believe, you know, Buffalo defensive injuries to travel. Miami, their schedule ahead, their defense isn't great of why uh, I don't have a problem just trying to stay within two touchdowns with an NFL team that I think is at the bottom of the market. One thing will be interesting now with Buffalo suffering those two devastating season-long injuries. Daquan Jones, what, what, what's his injury? He's uh, he's on IR. Um, but the, the other guy, the other guys are gone. Obviously, Milano's leg was in air cast and Trey White – uh, ripped his Achilles or ACL or whatever. I, I wonder if Buffalo kind of morphs into Miami. You know, defensively, they're a shell of themselves. They're not able to really stop anyone because the reason we love Buffalo going into the Miami game was how awesome their defense was. You know, relative, that's what you had to t- do to stop Miami. Now that defense becomes middle of the pack to below. All of a sudden, they're just an offensive-led team. And Josh, like last week, if he's a little off, they, they're in trouble. Same thing with Tua. Tua's a little off. You got a chance to beat him. So those... 
those two teams might start mirroring each other, which is something to keep an eye on. And last but not least, a guy who it was just fun to see him, and I get he's playing the Cardinals, but just look like himself again, just throwing bombs, hitting Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase, after said, I'm always fucking open, getting the rock, kicking ass, taking names. Uh, the Bengals are fun when their offense is humming and their offense gained life. And I think it all started with, he just didn't look right. You know, and we can argue, should he be out there? Should he not? It's the NFL you, you guys play. And uh, it's just a reality. Joe Burrow, if he's able to play, he's the, in, unless the doctor is going to refuse to let him out there, he's going to play. And he did not even remotely look close to the guy that we've become accustomed to last week. It feels like clearly that calf and his lower body looks better. He was definitely it just it looked fantastic to see the ball come out of his hand and hit guys in stride. So are the Bengals back one going to Seattle? Seattle's got life coming off a bye. Uh, I you know I, this is this is a nice little test for Cincinnati. Like if they are back, they win this game. Yeah, uh, I think you know with Burrow, there's two things at play with Burrow. Um, you scared me for a second because I'm just nine nine point nine percent sure this game is in Cincinnati. Um, yeah, it's it, cause, but you said go to Seattle and I was like, wait, where the like, game's in, uh, game's in Cincinnati and yeah. games in Cincy. Um, <laughs> my, my, my fault. uh, so yeah, I think if you look prior to last week at some advanced metrics that look at like EPA completion percentage over expectation, Burrow was the worst quarterback in the NFL, uh, through their first four games, worse than Zach Wilson, worse than you name it. Uh, last week. And he just, he couldn't plant, he couldn't move and because he couldn't move, he couldn't go through his progressions, and he was put th- just throwing balls into the dirt. He was clearly hurt. Last week, he finally looked healthy. A c- couple throws where he had to kind of open up and throw to the outside were a little short. Other than that, all of his touchdown passes, evading pressure. He was scrambling. He was going through his progressions. Because not only do I think he's now healthy, and then look, he's getting an- another week where that that's an injury that just keeps getting better um, as long as you don't in- inflame it. And but not only that, it's that Burrow didn't was hurt leading up to the season, and which happened the past two seasons. He had an, uh, a knee injury one season, and he had a his appendix removed another season. And in each yeah. of the past now three seasons, when he didn't have was not playing at all leading up to the start of the regular season, Dave the Bengals have gotten off to extremely slow starts. And Burrow is like he's a timing based quarterback, and once he gets going. He gets going and that's what's happened. So not only do I think he's healthier, but I think also he's just gotten that natural timing down. And, you know, to illustrate that in week six or later in his career, he's 19 and eight against the spread over 70%. And for what it's worth, he's 17, three and one against the spread in his last 21 games against non-divisional opponents. So when he's not playing those defenses in the FC North that uh, have a you know really good defenses, have a good understanding how to attack the Cincy team. Burrow has been almost automatic. So I think he's the Bengals are still undervalued. So I don't think the market is really pricing into the fact of what I believe is that Burrow's close. I would say 95%, maybe he's hundred percent this week. There's just a couple, it was one or two throws just to the outside and he's got to open up and rely on that calf a little more. But other than that, moving around, scrambling, evading pressure, going through his progressions uh, and then yeah, feeding chase, which is always a smart idea. I think he tar- <laughs> threw it to 19 times, to- no, targeted him 19 times in the game. Um, and then the Seahawks, I don't mind. I know they're coming off the bye, but this is a team I'm looking to sell. Not a full believer in them. I mean, they the last two teams they beat were the Panthers and the Giants. Uh, who cares? Um, and then before that, they they had a, a decent win at Detroit, but Detroit had a number of injuries that week. You know, coming off the KC win, Seattle needed a pick six, and then they get the ball in overtime to score. Uh, easily, easily could have lost that game without the, the bad golf pick six. So not completely – look, Seattle is not, also not going to get pressure. I know they got pressure on the Giants. Everyone does. But this is not a defensive line that's going to get pressure on Burrow. So Burrow's going to be able to sit back there, even though he's – I think he now can move around and evade pressure like he did last week. But he's going to have time to cook. So I'll trust Burrow over Geno at home where I basically just need him to win the game. Uh, I think the Bengals are too low here. Yeah, this is a, this is an interesting spot for Gino because I, I just I remember him having a really good game against the Lions and he was thirty two of forty one. He was through for three hundred thirty yards. Controlled environment indoors. This game outdoors, crowd would be rocking. Like this this is the spot last year down the stretch where he didn't quite look like the guy that you know became the comeback player of the year, thirty touchdowns, and the guy they wanted to resign. Yeah, 
I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm i like you. I, I tend to go. I, I This is usually when he regresses a little bit more than the time that like the following week he's playing the Cardinals. I, I would expect like three touchdowns, you know, at yeah. home. But th- this yeah. is a spot that, you know, is the reason he's kind of Geno Smith and people are like middle cough, you're being a hater. I, I don't know. I, I don't buy it fully, though. Seattle secondary is pretty good. I mean, that Witherspoon, they're the guy they took fifth, which ultimately probably came down to him and Jalen Carter was a bold pick for them, but the dude's a fucking baller. Uh, and obviously Pete Carroll's a secondary guy defensively. You know, the giants were in such shambles. I mean, their offensive line might as well have me, you and three other guys out there. So it's hard to judge their, you know, the 28 sacks they had on Monday night football, but can they get after the Bengals? Was that more of an outlier situation? This is just an interesting game for both these teams to really, you know, however this plays out, I think we'll have a better gauge on both of them. Because to me, if Seattle wins, then like, are they competing for that fifth seed? You know, because is Dallas Dallas some lock to be the the best wild card team? They lose, then, you know, maybe that fifth seed ends up just being a bunch of teams, 10 wins competing for that spot. Yeah, no, it would Seattle would definitely get my respect if they win this game. Uh, I'd have to take them a little bit more seriously. But uh, yeah, it's at the end of the day, it's just, what I think is now almost 100% Burrow against Geno Smith. Uh, yeah, I do like this Seattle secondary. Look no further than Illinois. The Illinois defense last year was elite. I mean, yeah, yes, they lost three guys in the top 75, one of them Witherspoon, but the three defensive backs went in the top 75 in the NFL draft. Their defense this year is terrible, horrendous, <laughs> horrendous. Um, so, but yeah, I, I think the Bengals get it done here. This is a massive game for Cincy to get back to 500. Um, stay really in the mix in the AFC. I mean, they still can go on a big run, but they have the hardest remaining schedule. If you look at strength of schedule rankings of any team in the NFL. So this is a big game to get at home after a slow start. You you basically could feel like, okay, we're still in the mix. We survived with the, the burrow injury. Uh, so I, I think they come out here really motivated. And I think they can get after Gino and that offensive line. Trey Hendrickson's playing out of his mind. Trey Hendrickson has six sacks, should have nine. He had three that were negated by illegal contact calls that really had nothing to do with the play. Uh, but he's playing out of his mind. So I, I think they'll pressure Gino into a couple of mistakes. And I'll, even if I, you know, if I'm down four late with three minutes to go and I need to borrow to drive the field with a touchdown, I'm not sweating too much and uh, I'll trust them to win this game. 